The honorary degree will now be conferred, and it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Victor Gomel. Ladies and gentlemen, in every profession, there are those few whose talent and dedication inspire all around them. Dr. Victor Gomel is one such individual. A renowned gynecological surgeon and a brilliant researcher and teacher, he has profoundly influenced the practice of reproductive medicine in Canada. Born and educated in Turkey, he chose to make Canada his home interning first at Montreal St. Mary's Hospital, and eventually moving to Vancouver, where, be, where he became professor and head of obstetrics and gynecology at UBC. During his tenure there, Dr. Gomel expanded the department, implemented a graduate program in reproductive and developmental sciences, and trained and mentored numerous medical students, residents and fellows, many of whom have gone on to hold important positions worldwide. His experimental research interests led to international recognition in several areas. He has developed numerous preclinical surgical adhesion models and authored more than 100 publications in that field of research. He is world renowned for his pioneering work in gynecological microsurgery and operative laparoscopy. In fact, he introduced laparoscopy and hysteroscopy to this country. He has also contributed significantly to our knowledge of female reproductive physiology. And in the true spirit of medicine, Victor Gomel has shared his expertise in microsurgical technique with colleagues the world over. A physician of great vision, Victor Gomel believed that an in vitro fertilization program should be established in BC. And he did just that. Under his stewardship, the program achieved the first IVF birth in Canada on Christmas Day, 1983. Since then, many hundreds of children have been born through its reproductive technology. And his concern for women's overall health caused him to spearhead the campaign to establish a standalone facility, the BC Women's Health Centre, now called BC Women's Hospital and Health Centre. Opened in 1992, the center was Canada's first such tertiary facility. This was a revolutionary achievement, for by bringing together specialists to provide the most current treatment possible, Victor Goel knew that public health policy and women's health care would be significantly changed for the better. Victor Gomel has received honorary memberships and awards of excellence from many scientific societies and universities, including the University of British Columbia where he is Professor Emeritus, Reproductive Endocrinology and Infertility. He holds the rank of Chevalier in the Order of the Légion d'Honneur, and he is a Fellow of the World Academy of Art and Science. Victor Gomel, by virtue of the authority vested in me and in the Senate of this university, I hereby admit you to the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Dr. Gomel will be hooded by Dr. John Driver, the Vice President Academic, and Ms. Kate Ross, the Registrar.
It is with pleasure that I now call on Dr. Victor Gomel for his convocation address. Dr. Gomel. Mr. President, faculty, graduates, ladies and gentlemen, this is indeed a very great honor from such a magnificent university, an honor even more significant as it represents recognition in my own city, a rare blessing. Such events usually occur toward the end of one's career, which is the case for me. So I may have a few things to say to a young audience of science graduates and many future scientists. Scientists have a very important influence in transforming a society usually for the good. Consider to what extent our lives have changed, even in the short span of the last 20 years, a time frame shorter than that of the lives of few graduates. We have witnessed dramatic changes in communication, technology, and medicine. The agricultural revolution has enabled the rapidly increasing world population to feed itself. We enjoy free and prompt access to information and knowledge as never before. None of us in this large assembly would have imagined 20 years ago that today we could be conversing with, the in, in, with individuals halfway around the world through a computer while seeing the others on the monitor, real time, and for free. Nor would we have imagined that it would be possible for a surgeon seated at a workstation, say here in Vancouver, to perform a surgical procedure on a live human being thousands of miles away say in Nepal, via satellite communication and using a robot at the other end. We would not have imagined that the human gen genome would have been completely mapped and that we would have the advanced technology, medications, the medicine of today enjoys. We owe it all to scientists. So you have chosen well. You can be a part of the current scientific revolution. Contrary to the exponential increase in scientific and technical knowledge, which greatly benefit our daily lives, there have been limited improvement in human conscience and behavior. Indeed, this is so during the 6,000 years of written history since the Sumerians. Harmony in a human society requires parallelism between science and ethics. Many decades ago, Albert Einstein wrote, it has become appallingly clear that our technology has surpassed our humanity. Therefore, it follows that while we thrive to succeed in our careers and create new knowledge, we must also acquire and espouse human values. Centuries before Einstein, the French Renaissance philosopher and physician Francois Rabelais 
said, science without conscience is the soul's perdition. You will undoubtedly have projects and brilliant ideas, which presented to your superiors, even colleagues, more frequently than not, will face a negative response. You may be told that it is difficult or impossible, whatever. Don't despair. Don't give up. Never take no for an answer. A no that does not have the necessary rational and scientific basis. One of my illustrious professors, when I was in medical school, had been dismissed from the department in which he was a relatively young faculty member for suggesting a new treatment for a frequently lethal disease, a treatment that is state of the art even today. So remember that in many instances, the truth of today may be the fallacy of tomorrow. You are at the starting line of a great odyssey, the odyssey of the rest of your lives. To cite Democritus, the Greek philosopher who lived some 25 years ago, all that exists in the universe is the fruit of chance and of necessity, the veracity of which was demonstrated by Charles Darwin in regards to evolution. As you know, this year we celebrate the 200th anniversary of Darwin's birth and the 150th anniversary of the publication of his Origin of Species. All that exists in the universe is the fruit of chance and of necessity. But life and a career to be successful also require vision and will. Each person's life is a journey, a voyage that must be enjoyed. Since we spend most of our awakened hours at work, we must enjoy what we do. Work about which we are passionate no longer is toil. What we do with passion, we do well. The Israeli, the famous Prime Minister under the reign of Queen Victoria said, life is too short to be small. There is much wisdom in these seven little words. Life is too short to be small. Worth remembering as you start to craft your own life and commence your own odysseys. Each individual must act in that time which is his own. For us mortals, each individual odyssey comes to an abrupt end. For science, the odyssey continues. I wish you great success in your careers and much joy and happiness in your lives. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gomel.